Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steve Connor. I'm the director of Central Hampshire Veterans Services, and welcome to another edition of the Central Hampshire Veterans Services Show. This show is um, geared for the veterans in my district. Uh, for those that don't know, my district goes from Pelham on the east side all the way across the county to Middlefield. Uh, to go through them really fast, Pelham, Amherst, Hadley, Northampton, Williamsburg, Goshen, Cummington, Chesterfield, Worthington, Chester, and Middlefield are the communities that I serve. However, a lot of the information I give is statewide information. Uh, we just don't air ourselves all over the place, but we are on YouTube. So if you're not one of those communities, you probably will see me on YouTube anyways. So today, um, it we have a couple of things we're going to do. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the new legislation, the PACT Act, that passed Congress uh, in August, and it has been a game changer in so many ways. So I really want to get some of the information out. When it deals with more detail in, pre, in, in following shows, I'm going to work at having some guests come in, uh, especially from the healthcare system because this has a lot of changes for them as well uh, and there's a lot of detail so I want to make sure I have somebody from the VA Health Department uh, here to discuss that with me. Today I'm going to go over some rough general information for both um, those that have served in the Gulf War and on the global war and terrorism depending on where they served and the Vietnam uh, war and all the toxins that existed back then which has been going on they've had some changes and new changes and how many years after the war is this I mean I'm just saying that uh, things change all the time so I'm hoping to let everybody know this and give you a heads up and know that you can come to my office again I'm the veteran service officer for all of those communities. We have an office in Memorial Hall in Northampton, but we also do office hours in other communities and we are a phone call away for anybody who needs us in the towns that I mentioned. We will go up to any town hall and meet with you and go over things. Um, our primary goal is to give financial security to low income veterans or their surviving spouses or surviving children if they are in need. It's a, it's a long to do of who is eligible, uh, but if you're a Massachusetts veteran or was married to a Massachusetts veteran or the child of a Massachusetts veteran, you may be eligible for our financial aid services under General Law Chapter 115. You can call our office at 413-587-1299 or go to vetadmin, V-E-T-A-D-M-I-N, at NorthamptonMA.gov and reach out to us if you want to know about your, vet, your benefits as a veteran of Massachusetts, our financial additional program, any of those things you can call our office or send us an email and we will um, be glad to help and, and tell you what we have to offer. But beyond just the financial assistance program, we do filing of claims for VA disability. We assist people in filling them out. We get them into a national service officer in Boston and they submit it all. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time and nowadays we have been doing more of that than just about anything else. And the PACT Act has been a big reason why, especially over the last few weeks. One of the things we had dedicated one of my shows previously to was about the closing of the VA hospital. Well. The VA facility in Leeds, turns out, it's not going to close. They stopped the commission from doing their work. And it's a good thing because within weeks after, they passed this new legislation about toxins. And in that legislation, they said that they needed 31 additional facilities throughout the country to meet the need of veterans who have been exposed to toxins, who have service-connected disabilities and who have real needs and rather than closing they actually have to open new ones so the one in Leeds is going to stay open 
They are soon to break ground at a new Seabock in Springfield that I believe is going to be almost three times the size of the one that is in existence now on Bond Street. And anybody who goes to Worcester to that Seabock, that's kind of what Springfield's going to look like. It's going to be much larger and more involved and more collaborative with other um, uh, medical facilities. So that's the good news for our area. And um, so you all can have a sigh of relief that they're not going to close. As a matter of fact, they're finishing up building one and I think they only have two more buildings that they're going to be repairing. And they will have spent about $125 million up there redoing it all, so it's impressive. So I, I have a little map, but it doesn't really matter um, of where those places are. Okay, now I want to move on to the PACT Act. And what it is, it, it's all about the different toxins and the different issues, exposure to things that veterans have faced since all time. But we, we can go back to mustard gas and all of that in World War I. But as we all know, World War I veterans are no longer around. World War II veterans are um, going down in numbers. However, the one thing I need to point out, if somebody died of a service-connected disease or exposure or disability, the surviving spouse can apply for what's called DIC, Indemnity and Indemnity Care, Dependency and Indemnity Care, and um, are eligible for many things as well through the VA um, system, Benefit Administration. So I'm going to be talking about veterans and what they've gone through, but if the veteran is already gone and it could be a service-connected death, you need to call our office because families can get benefits and get compensated for what um, the veteran had done, uh, both male and female. So the military environmental exposures, these exposures include a wide variety of, age, of, of different agents, including nuclear, chemical. They also talk about the physical stuff such as sound, vibrations, noise, and x-rays. That's all been part of the military environment for both deployed and in garrison veterans. So um, pay attention to that um, and look in your records. Military environmental agents have been potential to cause adverse health effects either alone or in combination with others. This PACT Act defines the term toxic exposure, but generally toxic exposure refers to a subset of military environmental exposures. Whether the exposure is top toxic is determined by the substance, the concentration of exposure, the route of exposure, inhalation, ingestion, and things like that, and the duration of exposure. So the chemicals, uh, I don't think there's many people in America who have not heard of the herbicide Agent Orange, which was used in Vietnam. Now we also are talking about burn pits and sulfur fires in Iraq. Camp Lejeune water supplies. That affected both military veterans, their families, and contractors who spent decades living in Camp Lejeune and got exposed to the water. The one thing I would say is be very careful when you hear advertising about the Camp Lejeune and the lawsuits. There are a lot of lawyers who are looking to get work. They will take a section of whatever you get. You may be better off if you're a veteran or a family member of a veteran of going after disability claims through the VA Benefits Administration rather than through a lawsuit, which could take a long time and will have various in a variety of in um, outcomes, excuse me. Uh, and so think long and hard, call our office if you have questions about it. Uh, some of the other things are um, in Atsugi, Japan. The, there was a waste incinerator. That, that caused um, health problems. Um, burn pits, the oil well fires during the Gulf War. There are now certain conditions that are service connected. Um, then there's the sand and the dust and the very small fine particles or liquid dro droplets that people were breathing in, uh, in in Southwest Asia. 
there's always asbestos, industrial solvents, lead, radiation, vibration noise fuels, um, PCBs, and even there's some special paint that was used on military vehicles. Those also could cause health issues and if you think you are exposed to that stuff please reach out there may be help for you both through the health administration and through compensation through the benefits administration of course we know that one of the things that's not safe is nuclear weapons and the testing the x-rays and depleted uranium and finally chemical weapons um, there is project 112 and project shipboard hazard and defense and it's under the thing of shad um, I don't know that much about it I'll learn more uh, when it comes to um, a following show but those are out there herbicide storage and all of that so those are all very interesting conditions that you can get one of the things and I wanted to make sure that we covered was we recently have had Vietnam era veterans who didn't serve boots on the ground, who also got exposed to toxins, namely Agent Orange, and have always been denied compensation because they didn't have boots on the ground or they weren't blue water. So the blue water went on for 30 years. People were saying, okay, we weren't spending all our time on the ground, but we were in the waters right outside there. We were also exposed to Agent Orange. Finally, the National Institute of Health said, yes, there is now a connection. So they have now been under that thing. Well, now it's going even further, and it's really helped out a few of my veterans, one in the Hill Towns, uh, one in Hadley. I have veterans that have been trying to say they were exposed to Agent Orange, but they were never in Vietnam, but they have those conditions. Well, just so you now know, Vietnam-era veterans that are eligible for health care has now increased um, to the following locations and time periods and are also eligible for VA healthcare effective August 10th of 2022, last month. And that's, of course, the people who served in the Republic of Vietnam from January 1962 to May of 75. Thai and any U.S. or Royal Thai base between January 9th of 1962 and June 30th of 1976. So if you didn't serve in Vietnam, but you served and were on a base in Thailand during those years, you also are now eligible for VA health care, but you also may have some of the health exposures. And if you have anything like those that come with Agent Orange, um, you are eligible for benefits administration. Laos, between 19, December of 1965 in September of 1969. Certain provinces in Cambodia for about a year period of time. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's only between April 16th of 69 and April 30th of 1969. Guam, American Samoa, or other territorial waters between 1962 and June 31st of 1980. So we're talking about whole expansion of people that may have all these exposures. And uh, Johnston Atoll, or a ship that's been called there, that's an Air Force base that was several thousand kilometers from Hawaii. Um, not many people went there, but if you were one of those uh, from 1972 um, and September 30th, 1977, you also could have been exposed to stuff and you are now eligible for VA health care. So there's a lot there I just threw out. Um, one of the other things I also wanted to say, and we'll go into it further in another show, but just when you understand the, the burn pits and the oil pits, some of the things that are now presumptive, you have it and you serve there, it's automatic. Asthma, diagnosed after you went into the service, brain cancer, chronic bronchitis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, chronic rhinitis, chronic sinusitis, constrictive bronchiolitis, or obliterate, ooh, another bronchiolitis. I won't try to say that one. Emphysema, um, gastrointestinal cancers of any type. 
there are so many head cancer of any type, lung disease, kidney disease, uh, lymphatic cancer of any type, lymphoma of any type, melanoma, neck cancer, pancreatic cancer, pleuritis, pulmonary fibrosis, reproductive cancer of any type, respiratory cancer of any type, or sarcos, yeah, I'm gonna tear that one up. Sarcoitis, I think it's how you say it. Those are all for Gulf War or post 9-11. And now, going back, I can't tell you how many people I put in for claims. One of the things they wanted to put in for, for exposure to Agent Orange, was high blood pressure. That's never been approved. It now is. So I have a lot of people who are coming back to my office and we're putting in supplemental claims because they one time claimed it. Now it's been presumptive and indeed they now can be receiving compensation for high blood pressure. And ooh, this one's a tough one. Monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance otherwise known as MGUS. So if anybody there has a diagnosis and you're a Vietnam era veteran and you were under those different exposures, even the places I mentioned just previously, please come to our office, go to any office, go to the VFW, go to the American Legion, see a service officer and put in a claim. The one thing I always tell my veterans, is they say, well, I don't wanna take anything, I wanna save it for the next person. The reality is, is if you don't get it, if you don't file for it and you're not compensated for what the government exposed you to, you then make it harder for the next veteran coming up. They won't get it because the previous generation didn't fight for it. And I have a whole lot of Iraq and Afghan vets who are very thankful to the Vietnam veterans because the Vietnam veterans have fought for those things. And, and we're talking 50 years later, they're still fighting for them, like high blood pressure that just became presumptive in August. So if you think you're saving it for the next person, you're not. The government needs to know how many people got exposed to it, because then it helps everyone else who served. With that in mind, I'm now going to break away from this conversation, but still talk about our Vietnam veterans. Several years ago, we took a trip with World War II and Korean War veterans. Um, I think it was our very first show or maybe our second show, I had a couple of guests on to talk about the Veterans Council of Northampton and how they were trying to do a feasibility study about having a trip to Washington DC to go see the wall. Well, COVID has complicated things, but we're back on track and we're reaching out again and to discuss this is one of my previous guests, uh, Mr. Tom Pease, yep. who is the commander of the VFW post 8006 and a Vietnam combat veteran himself who knows all about these crazy exposures sure. and sure the craziness that was known as mm -hmm. uh, the Vietnam War, or the Vietnam yep. conflict, as I was brought up being told it was. Yep. Um, so welcome, Tom. Well. I'm glad, to ha I'm glad you got me here, Steve, again, we're trying it. I am presently also the president of the Veterans Council of Northampton. Oh, correct, yes. And, you know, we all got together, what was it, 10 or 11 years ago and brought a bunch of them down there to D.C. Yep. And unfortunately, most of them are gone. But yeah. so I made a proposal along with you that uh, let's do something for the Vietnam veterans. We're going to do it for the Vietnam veterans that served boots on the ground and blue water in Vietnam, <clears throat> as long as you were a resident of Northampton, you came through Northampton right. to be either drafted or enlisted or whatever, and you wound up in Vietnam. Our proposal is for this trip to take place in late March. Uh, we would like to have the veterans there for March the 29th, 2023 for the ceremony there for the uh, National Recognition, Vietnam Veterans Recognition Day. Right. Uh, our proposal is to leave Northampton on Tuesday, March the 28th, the morning of, and land there. It's only five or six hour trip, really. I mean, mm -hmm. with the bus driver we had last time, it was great. <laughs> and uh, then uh, on the 28th and Wednesday, we can go to the, cel the ceremony, celebration, whatever you want to call it, on the 29th. 
uh, on Thursday, I would like to see the group visit the rest of the memorials and then trek on over to the Arlington National Cemetery where we can spend, spend the afternoon there. And we'll be returning on Friday, March the 23rd. Uh, 20, I'm sorry, March the, March the 31st. Right. And sometime in the morning or afternoon. So that means three nights down there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds yeah, like a great yeah. trip. And, and, and um, all the activities are going to be awesome. I know that um, they have a thing called Honor Flight um, that has flies veterans down there and yep. to the monuments and bring them back. But that all happens in one day. I know that down at the World War II Club, we hosted a bunch of veterans who went off and we saw them about yep. 22 hours later, they came that is, back. That's tough. It, and it is tough. Um, and it was life changing for them, but it was exhausting. And, and some people didn't get to go because they couldn't take that much I, stress uh, on their body. So this kind of a trip, yep. this is a bus trip and it's three nights, four days. Three nights, four days, right. all expenses paid. Right. You don't, I mean, you don't have to bring any money. We, we're gonna we're gonna cover all the costs, the transportation, the food and food and the housing. You know, right. to and from it's the whole deal. As a as a bystander, not a bystander, we were significant. Jerry Clark and I, and you right. know, a few of the others were significant in putting together. You know, that ten or eleven years ago, but I was absolutely overwhelmed with the trip down there. Was very quiet. The trip back was. Just unbelievable, I've got the goosebumps now, thinking yeah. about it because of the camaraderie that took place and the buzz and everything that happened on that bus ride back. People hadn't seen each other for years or whatever, and, and it was every night got better and better and better. So, um, yeah, I heard there that, was even singing of the old songs on oh, the way back. Oh, it was, it was, it was. So old, maybe on the way back of this trip, we'll all be do singing the animals, right? Yeah, yeah, could right. be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're reaching out to all your Vietnam veterans. I mean, right. so, so let me just understand. So we're, we're talking those that, you know, went into, nor into the war right. uh, from Northampton. It says it on their DD-214. Right. Boots on the ground. In, boots on the ground. Okay. And blue water. And blue water. Right. Now, I know we've talked about it, and the Veterans Council has said, you know, we're going to fill all those that want to go with extra seats. We yep. then want to say, look, if you went to Vietnam yep. or Blue Water and you currently live in Northampton. And North you live Hampton, in Northampton. Then that's the second tier of guests yeah, that that's we're right. looking for. In Northampton, that means uh, Bay State, Leeds, Florence, right. Northampton. Right. That, the whole, that whole section. If you live in Northampton now, please contact us. Right. And the third, a as we progress, we're going to see how the head count goes. Right. And if we need to fill more seats, we're going to put a shout out to Vietnam veterans era, you right. know. I know a lot of guys that, you know, they just feel they, bad about not being there. They served, you know, some right. of them made a career out of it. They, they, so they took the oath and they swore to defend the Constitution. And, you know, yeah. and a lot of us, we all grew up together, whatever, but you know, darn it, I, I didn't serve over there, Tom. You know, we're, we're gonna make an exception. It's, yeah. life is too short right. and we need to take care of each other. And we want to so, have a full bus. We want to fill up that bus. Oh, I'd love so. to have two buses. If we yeah. could raise the funds, and by the way, we are in the process right now of right. raising funds. I yeah, if you I, own I, a business, if you right. own a business out in the Northampton or greater Northampton area, we're going to be reaching out to you to help us fund this, um, to make this a great trip. Because some of the veterans are either wanting to bring their spouse if they're going to be mm -hmm. able to do the trip and healthy, or if a veteran needs somebody to be a chaperone, you know, to help them. They're in a wheelchair, they have difficulty walking, yep. things like that. We already have, I know of two Vietnam era veterans that said, I want to go down there, I want to be with the folks even though I didn't go. Way. They want to pay their own way. Right, so. and they're going to be ambassadors. Right. So we, we, we have a way for you, for the Vietnam veteran to get to this thing. If you either went in through Northampton or second tier, if you currently live in Northampton and you served over there, we're gonna fill that bus up. If there are some open seats, then we're gonna reach out to, and it might have to be a lottery at that point, whatever seats we have left, but we wanna make this awesome, just like it was 11 years ago. Oh, it was great, it was yeah. absolutely great. Um, so. Yeah, and we, we we would like a head count sooner than later, but we'll we'll be advertising also. I'm sure in the paper we're going to do some radio stuff, and we're you know, right. 
in this uh, in this show. This show, um, absolutely. I might provide Dave with a little announcement. We can air every once yep. in a while on 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 Access yep, do Television. Yeah, shout out. If you know somebody who doesn't live close in this area, but are you know they might live in New Hampshire, Connecticut, or New York now, uh, but you know they were a Vietnam veteran from Northampton, reach out to them. If they're a friend or their family, tell them we're doing this. They come over to Northampton, they hop on that bus and we go down to DC. So um, we're going forward with it, it's gonna happen. Uh, we just don't know who's going with us. We we've, have a list so far, but we've got plenty of seats still left. So um, we just need to see DD-214s and verify each category. And again, it's the priority is going to be those who went in from Northampton. Second, those that currently live in Northampton. And then we're going to go for the Northampton um, Vietnam era veterans, if there are still seats, because we want to have it full we and have it a, all I matters. Want a full bus. And uh, yeah, can uh, you think of all the music that's going to play when? Oh, uh, I yeah. tell you, yeah, it'll be yeah. '60s music, that's for sure. Yeah, but it's um, it, it was heartwarming. It was gut wrenching at times. It was things were talked about that I never knew. I mean, Bob Young never. Yeah. Never talked about it until then. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. in my office, there's so many times I have veterans, um, the family of a veteran who comes in and says, wow, you know, my father never said anything until like this year. Yeah. And now he's gone. Yeah. But he told me what he did. Or my mom, I didn't know she was a nurse and served over there. You know, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So that's out there. War isn't a pleasant story. It's no. not something. No, it's but not. But it's also something you live with, and sometimes it's, you just got to share yeah, it. Yeah, and so a, people as a know. Vietnam veteran, you know, there isn't a day go by I don't think about it. So I right. know the other veterans are the same. Those guys that have served on the ground, even blue water. Come on, guys and women too. There yeah. were women. If there's any any women out there, any young ladies that'd like to go, I mean, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, we all have something to share. We all have. We gave up some time. Some of us gave up a full year. Some gave up two years, and you know it's a part of us. So and some uh, gave up their lives, and some, they're now on right, the wall, and right. that's why and, we and that's where we're and going because them. we have we have seven from Northampton, I believe, yeah. that are on the wall, yeah. and we must we we've got to get down there and and honor them, and honor each other. Yeah. So uh, give us a call. Yeah, you can call you Steve's office at five eight seven five eight seven one two nine nine. Um, or you can send us an email at vetadmin at northamptonma.gov. Um, or yeah. call the VFW. Call the VFW. Or, yeah, or the American Legion is yep. coming back. American, we're, right. we're getting ready to the start VFW up again. VFW is 584-8006. Yeah. Give what a call. It, Just leave your name, yep. some contact information, and we will get back to you. We yep. are we welcome, we're going to welcome all of you with open arms. Um, we're really looking forward to this. And yep. like... Like Steve said, we are going to be reaching out to all our community business business people. Um, I feel very confident we're going to be able to do this. We are going yeah. to do this. We are going we to are. do this. And um, it's real important um, that we recognize what people from a generation past went through, just like we did tough. with the greatest generation yep. of World War Absolutely. II. Hey, you know, what the Vietnam veteran went through and still is going through 50 mm -hmm. years later we need to acknowledge that. We need to celebrate their service and say thank you. And this is the way the Northampton Veterans Council and will take guys, care of that. Guys, you know, we got to celebrate each other. We got to let's uh, let's let, let let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So that's um, today's show. Again, uh, you need any services, and you're a veteran of any war, any conflict, any time period. Get in touch with us. We'll tell you what benefits you get. Um, we will have more about the PACT Act and all of the different conditions and what treatment you can get from the VA healthcare system uh, and who is now eligible because the eligibility is expanded. And like I say, they're building 31 new facilities uh, to meet the need. So there's, there's a lot of things out there for the veterans of all wars let us know you're out there. We will connect you up. And to celebrate you, if you're a Vietnam uh, veteran, we want to take you on a trip. And that's today's show. We'll be back with more uh, next month. And thank you, everybody, for watching.
Thank you.